evening, Active Church. Or should we say Active Youth? Amen. Is everybody still there? Awesome. I'm just going to share with you today about Romans chapter 12, starting at verse 2. And I want you to turn to your neighbor and shake your neighbor. No, shake him. I don't see people shaking there. And say, neighbor. So are you ready to be transformed? Amen. So Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn how to know God's will uh, for you, which is good, perfect, and pleasing. So it says, don't be conformed, some translations say, to the pattern of this world. Um, I've got some pictures. I'll ask Kayla just to put some pictures up for me. So uh, if you can bring up the first picture. All right, it's on the screen over there. Can you see it? Okay, so I want you to choose a dot. And that's you. Okay, any dots? Now, why do I want you to choose a dot? Because if you think about life, right, we live in a world where over 7 billion people exist. You know, if you had to take 7 billion people and put them on a map, and you had to try to find yourself, you won't find yourself. You realize that, eh? Uh, myself and my younger son is uh, well, actually a blessing. We, we do a game called Where's Wally? It's actually like a comic book strip top thing. And then in that, you go to find a guy called Wally. It's a guy with like red stripes and red socks and red and white, and he's a weird looking guy with the big glasses. And they put him in these different backgrounds with lots of people. And then if you can find Wally, you win. And so you always go, there's Wally, there's Wally, and we, and we try and find Wally. I want you to think about that. We live in a society where you, 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 you fit into the picture, and when you fit into the picture of this world, you look just like the world. You can't be distinguished from the world. You're like a dot amongst a whole bunch of dots, and you don't stand out. I want you to understand that God built you to stand out, and God built you and says His good, pleasing, and perfect will comes. But if you look like the world and your mind is not transformed, you and the world blend together. You don't stand out. You look the same. You know, some translations say um, conform, which comes from uniform. You know that you wear a uniform to school. You can tell the uniform of a school, and you can tell the school by the uniform, right? So I want to just ask him to just put the next picture on for us there. So that picture, if you put the dots together, makes a picture of what? What is that? It's the devil, yes. <laughs> Satan, the devil. <laughs> There's many names for him there. Now, I want you to think about it. In the world, the world is controlled by the devil. And how do you know who controls you? You're controlled by who you listen to, who you obey, right? So... Your life is a, is a series of choices, and you've made choices to get you where you are, and if you're unhappy, you have to change, right? So if you don't want to look like everybody else who's controlled by the devil, and he controls their thoughts, then you have to change the way you see and the way you think. Amen? We've got some more pictures over there. I was going to ask me to bring up the next one. Okay, this is now, when I grew up, a long time ago, when I was a, a young teen, uh, not a young teen, uh, a young adult, right? In my 20s and late, late 19s and 18s, many, many years back, I'm 42 now. Okay, when I was young and still clubbing, those days you were defined by the music that you listened to. And you could tell what type of music people listened to by the clothing that they wore. So if you look at that guy on the screen over there, that guy is what we used to be called a raver. So we never had a house, you never had trance, you had rave music. And ravers were these type of people, you could identify them by the type of music that they listen to. And then I want to show you the next one. Scary, eh? Now that's what you call a goth. So I used to listen to heavy metal music, if you like the Metallicas, if you like the, the, the Nirvanas, if you, if you like the, the deep, you don't know what they're saying, and they just, and there lots of guitar and drums and stuff. That was me, right? You could identify them, and I never wore makeup. Please, I never went that direction. Okay, I, I never even had a lip ring because rings were for, for, for guys that, you know. Yeah. Anyway, so I would wear black. I dyed my hair black. I would wear black clothing. And wherever we went, we would look for ravers and we would beat them up because they were our enemies. In fact, where I, where I used to go in club, it was a goth club. 
So I'd go with people like that, and it's quite scary. It's all black, and you go, and, and there are these people walking around, these long hair, and they shake their hair like this. And then we would go clubbing with these people. Can you imagine, eh? And what happened is the goths didn't like the ravers because of the type of music that they listened to, and the music they listened to would determine their style of clothing. It's quite something, eh? You could identify them by what they listened to. It's quite something, isn't it, eh? Which means... If you are identified by what you listen to, what you listen to changes your behavior. Amen? So if you look like the world, and the world now is a part of what the devil's plan is, guess what? You look just like the devil, and the Bible says the, the devil is the father of all lies and the father of all sin. Haven't you ever wondered why you live in a society where it's very difficult? It's difficult these days, eh, to find someone that keeps their word. I mean... Imagine if God had to judge you for every time you lied. <laughs> or every time you thought a lie. How do I look? Now you look fabulous. <laughs> and it's your best friend, you know. Because the idea is that we live in a society where their thinking is part of the world. And when the devil controls your thinking, you look like the world and you produce what the world produces. Mediocre. You look the same. You don't stand out. And can I tell you what the problem with the world is in following the devil is that he wants your destruction. So everyone is bound to die, right, because we sinned. The Bible says that when God came to Adam and Eve, he came to Adam and Eve. And, sorry, and, and, he, and he put them in charge of the earth and everything in the earth, and he made it all, the animals. And then the Bible says that he put them in charge, and he would come and he would visit them. And then one day the Bible says that the devil came down in the form of a serpent, a snake, in Genesis chapter 3. And the snake came down and it met Eve, you know, all the ladies, eh? No, I'm just joking, eh? And it came down in the form of a snake and it had a conversation with her. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, I don't know how many animals you know that speak, eh? But she didn't think too much about it. She just started having this conversation with the snake. And as she's talking to the snake, the snake's conversing with her. And then the snake plants an idea. You see, sin starts with an idea, right? And it says, you know what? God doesn't want you to be just like him, knowing good and evil. In other words, Adam and Eve were happy to be in the presence of God when that was their thought pattern. When God was their God and he was their friend and he would come and visit him, they were happy to be in the relationship with God. Now, the moment they had the thought that God was withholding from them, that they were less than God was, that thought started taking their mind captive. And the Bible says that from that point onwards, they noticed the tree and it became desirable for fruit. In other words, they even told the snake, they said, that tree in the middle we can't eat from. They passed that tree how many times? How many times have you passed stuff which you never thought you would do, and when you're involved with the wrong type of people or have the wrong type of thinking, or the flesh is aroused, you find yourself appealing and looking after things you would never find yourself doing before. It's quite something, eh? They saw the tree was desirable for food, and the Bible says that they lusted after it. They would desire it. And the Bible says that they ate, and the moment they sinned, the Bible said that death came. It's quite something, isn't it, eh? In other words, if you're part of the system of this world, this world is dying. You know, I was telling some guys in my cell group the other day, you know, when you look at your father, don't laugh at him because you'll be him one day. We all get to that stage, right? Everything in this life is decaying. Everything in this life is corroding. The world is corroding because of sin. In other words, when you start getting old and you start getting saggy cheeks and you start getting saggy skin and you start getting saggy bellies, don't hate the process. Change the process. And the process comes by Jesus who died on the cross and set us free. Amen. I want to show you another picture there, if you can just bring it up for me. All right, there's another picture, a black dot. You know, before you give your life to Christ, your life in the light of a white background is dark, isn't it? Because you see, sin in the light of holiness stands out and looks terrible. See, in the light of God's glory and His grace, you in your sinful state look filthy to the Lord. And in light of God's holiness, and God wants you to be holy as He is holy, right? So God expects us to be holy, but we've got the sinful state. 
And so controlled by the devil, and you're thinking controlled by the devil, you have to change the way you think, but that doesn't come by yourself. I want to read it to you again there. And listen to what it says. It says, don't be conformed to the pattern or behaviors of this world, but let God, does it say you? Let God transform you, I um, just lost my place, into the new person by changing the way you think. In other words, the old person has gone and the new person has come and God does the process. Got something, eh? So when you look at yourself before a holy God, and you can bring up the next picture. You see, when we come together as Christians, it's only through the cross that all of us can have any hope. You see, when you look at your sinful state, you have to take your sin and put it upon the cross. Because when you look at your sin upon the cross, now all of a sudden, your sin on the cross looks glorious. It makes a beautiful picture, isn't it? You see, the idea is on your own, you're filthy and disgusting because of your sin. And I know you may be sitting here thinking, ah, sin is fun. But the problem is sin causes death. We knew a guy that used to come to church, and I used to pass him by every single day, and he would be begging for food. And I remember bringing the guy to church one day, and then we never saw him for a period of time, and then later on I found out the guy had died. He was stuck on drugs. He couldn't break free because of the pattern of this world. And so what happened is, when you give your life to Jesus, inside of His holiness, He takes your sin and He nails it to the cross. And you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus, and it washes you clean. It changes your garments. It changes your clothing. You go from a raver and a goth to a priest. Now, many of you may be sitting there thinking, and that's so boring. But you know what's, what, what's even more boring is dying without your purpose. Because Jesus came, and the Bible says wherever he went, he affected every, everything. Wherever he went, crowds of people would follow him. You know, you may have followers on Instagram, but if you call them to come meet you today, why is the church this full when it can be much fuller? If you had a thousand people, where are they? Why aren't they with you if they're following you? Because we have followers on Instagram, and we have followers on Facebook, but we don't really have followers in terms of our behavior, who we are, right? It's Jesus that people follow, and when they follow Jesus, they get transformed. And God built you to be like Jesus, but you can't be like Jesus until he's changed into something new, right? In other words, the concept of being changed into something new happens through the cross. When your sin is crucified at the cross and the blood of Jesus transforms who you are. And the next minute the Bible says that God takes your sinful state and he leaves it there and he gives you his perfection. It's quite something, eh? I ran a cell group on Tuesday and I did an altar call. And there were different guys in, in that group, young boys, all the boys, all the men. And uh, when I did the altar call, I said to them, it doesn't matter what you've done because when God sees you through the light of Jesus, he sees perfection. You see, we can never meet the standard. In, in our sinful state, the devil controls our thinking and our thoughts are controlled by the devil, right? But think about what it says. It says, be transformed. How many of you ever watched that movie, Bumblebee? And you watch that movie, eh? And you see that old foxy beetle. I had a friend that had a foxy beetle like that. It was quite classy. It had like those chromed mags. And, and, but as, as classy as it was, everybody would rather take a golf five at that stage than that old beetle. Now, if you imagine thousands of beetles riding on the road, you can't spot the beetle that's different because they all look the same. And they're going from destination to destination. And they're using up resources because isn't that what we do in life, eh? We're going from destination to destination, and we're using up resources only to run out, only to have the car break down, right? But when you look at that movie, Bumblebee, Bumblebee is a transformer. It's a beetle that can transform into something more awesome, right? So it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, when your mind starts to change, what you think starts to change, and who you are and what you become starts to transform. In other words, you're no longer that little beetle on the side of the road. You're a transformer. You can now be a part of saving the world. See, God didn't design you to, to, to be like everybody else. Many people are searching money. And money is means to no end because you can search money, but you leave it behind. It's quite something, eh? And so we can search the things of this world or we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And because Jesus laid our sin upon that cross, now we can be all that God has called us to be. He says His good, pleasing, and perfect will. 
There's nothing greater than knowing God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. And I'll give you a testimony of myself. When I went to school, I was average. I failed grade one. Not a color in the lines. <laughs> My A's would go the opposite way around, and I'm in the B's and D's. I couldn't do the bad thing, you know. And so I failed grade one. And then I, I was told that I, I was too slow for grade one, so they made me repeat it. I got a new set of class, a new set of classmates, and then I redid grade one, and I went through school, and I was like everybody else. I was a number in school. And then I left school, and then I decided to go and uh, work in a summer camp overseas. And going over to America, I wanted to make a mark for myself. I wanted to travel to another country. No one in my family had ever flown on a plane before. I was the first person to fly on a plane. I kissed my family goodbye. I'm like, Arrivederci, I'll see you when I see you. And I didn't find my mom for an entire month. I was having so much fun. Eh? And then I came back, and you know what happened is I fell into the pattern of the world. In America, I drank what they would call, it was a Heineken, not a Heineken, it's Ice House. It's these cheap beers in America, or Budweiser if you had a lot of cash. And I would drink these cheap beers, and I would get drunk, and then I started having sex with girls from other countries that I, uh, that I wasn't married to. I started going to clubs, and when I came back, I, I continued to do those things. And I got to a stage where doing the stuff of the world was so boring, was so unfulfilling, that I said to God, why did you make me, because life doesn't make sense, I'm getting old to just die. And that thought drove me to the point where I said, either God, you change me or take me away. What's the point of getting old like my parents and just dying and struggling through this life? You know, in a moment where I had a conversation with God on a very cold night, I said to God, send something to show me that you're real. Because my mother believed and I'd never seen God for real in my, in my life as something that was real. I went to a church service a week later. This guy preached, and he preached about his life, and it was just like mine. It's funny, eh? Because the pattern of this world is the same, isn't it? Eh? It takes sin and makes it common, and then we can relate to it. And some of us find comfort in our sin. We adopt it like it's our identity. But what happened is I saw his life, and I saw my life, and I thought, I don't want to live like that anymore. And he said to me, God changed me. He can change you. In that moment, I'm sitting there in a Methodist church, and I'm hot, and I'm cold, and I'm on fire, and God said to me, give your life to me tonight, because you're not going to have another chance. I don't know what would have happened if I never gave my life to him. I never explored that option. But God told me, this is your last chance. I gave my life to Jesus that night, and it wasn't even a month later, I saw Pastor Gavin. And at that stage, he was walking with the youth pastor of the church, and they walked in, and they had this glow. There was like this glow around them, eh? And I thought, that's so strange. <laughs> I'm like, this man is glowing. <laughs> you know, the Bible talks about Moses, and then his face was shining. We read about it this morning in our devotion with, with Philip, and his face was shining. They were staring at him. I saw, I saw Pastor Gav and this guy, Kevin. And then they came, and they sat down, and they were talking. And as I came out, Pastor Gav said to me, what are you doing? And I said, no, I'm working at a CD store. He says, don't you want to come run a Christian radio station? I was like, this guy doesn't even know me. Why does he want me to run a Christian radio station? I didn't sleep that night, and I thought, what would it look like if I ran a Christian radio station? I was a nobody from nowhere doing nothing, and the thought of running a radio station for Jesus excited me. I got involved in active youth. I started going around from place to place, planting youth groups, and then I had a desire to preach. I came to Pastor Gabe. He critted my sermon twice and wrote it up, and I rewrote it three times, and I preached my first sermon, and no one gave their lives, and I thought, I'm going to give up preaching and Pastor Gavin encouraged me. He's like, no, don't give up preaching. And then I, said my, I, I did my second sermon, and, and the entire youth group gave their lives. And God said to me, I can use you, even though you didn't have the ability to speak, and people can give their lives. And you know, that transformed my life, that God would use me to impact people. I want you to understand his good, pleasing, and perfect will comes by the blood of Jesus when he makes you new, and he transforms your thinking. The devil wants to keep you mediocre. He wants you to live life flatlining until you die. But God has designed you to spend eternity with him. It's quite awesome, isn't it, eh? So in understanding that, I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. We want to give you all the opportunity right now. See, there's no point in us having this service if you don't preach to the gospel. Because the renewing of your mind comes... Through Jesus, who is the living word and the spoken word. 
And so understanding where you are and where God designed you to be, sin doesn't have to dominate you anymore. So even though you die in this life, you don't have to die the second death, the eternal death. God can transform you. But you can't do it by yourself. God has to do the transformation. And you've got to decide, I was going in this direction, and I'm going to change and go in that direction. I used to follow the devil, but I'm tired of following the devil. I want to follow Jesus. If that is you right now, you can just raise your hand. Thanks, I see those hands. There's hands that are going up. You can just raise your hand right now. There's another hand over there. Don't allow the devil to deceive your thoughts. Don't allow him to identify you with himself. Because the devil himself, the Bible says, will get chucked into the lake of fire. You're not following someone that has your future in mind. You're not following someone that wants you to be empowered and encouraged. You're following someone that wants you to be in eternity with him in hell. Tonight, Jesus is appealing to you. He paid the price at the cross on every single level, and he paid the price so that one day, right now, today, you can have the offer and you can be set free. Don't allow this opportunity to pass you by. Just raise your hand one last time, and then we'll just pray with you. If you can all just stand. And those that have raised their hands, if you can just come to the front. Don't be embarrassed. Jesus took an embarrassing death for you. Amen. Give him, their, give him a hand as they come forward. Amen. Amen. Come on, give him a bigger hand than that. Amen. Amen. And if you didn't put up your hand and you still like to come, you can still come to the front. Amen. All right, we're just going to pray together with those that are here. And then they're going to take you outside and they're just going to let you fill in that, that card that you've got there. Just put your details in. We want to connect with you. We want to put you a part of a family because you need a family. You need people to come around you and to help you. We're just going to pray together. Are you ready to pray this prayer with me? pray together say father god i come before you and i give you my heart and my life today i accept jesus death in my place i thank you that all his blood was shed at that cross just for me thank you for dying on that cross for me. Today, I accept your free gift of eternal life. And I accept that I am a new creation. The old has gone. The new has, <laughs> the new has come. In the name of your Son, Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Give them all a hand. You can uh, follow Nolene over there. She's going to take you. Thank you. Give them a hand as they come out. Amen.